I'm a photographer and I am working on a photography project called the Untitled Chair Project. It's a, this, this chair and this camera and I are on a campaign to raise awareness for the need of registered bone marrow donors. We're doing it one Polaroid at a time. Now there's different ways of uh, raising awareness. I'm utilizing photography as a tool to raise awareness for the need of registered bone marrow donors. And like most people that work on a cause, there's been an event in their life that's caused them to stand up and say, hey, I want to make the world a better place. This is my best friend Doug Dietz and I uh, on my patio in Denver, Colorado. Um, Doug was diagnosed, this is 1996, Doug was diagnosed with leukemia. When Doug started his chemotherapy treatments, he lost all of his hair. And I did what any best friend would do, show my love and support. I shaved my head. I didn't want him to think that he was going through this by himself. Sadly, a few months after this photograph was taken, we lost Doug to leukemia. And at the time, I promised him, I silently promised him that one day I would do something to raise awareness for the need of registered bone marrow donors. So let's fast forward from 1996 to May 8th of 2011. There was an article in the national newspaper about a young Arab girl that needed a matching donor. No one in her family was, was suitable. And so her parents were reaching out to the general public looking for that one perfect person that could save their daughter's life. And what the article went on to say was that the 15.5 million registered donors, only 45 are from this region. The, and those 45 are registered right here at Charge of Blood Bank. And so I did some research. I had to figure out why, why is that? Why just only 45? And I figured out it's not from neglect. It's just from the lack of awareness. So this is, this is May 8th. Um, May 9th, I began to ch I put pen to paper, and I challenged myself to come up with a campaign that would make these numbers move in a positive direction. So let's, let's take stock of, of, of this, like where I'm at right now. This is May 8th. I had moved here to the Emirates um, March of 2011. So at this time, I'd only been here for two months. Um, being a freelance photographer, I'd only done one um, photo assignment for a local newspaper. And again, uh, I'd only been here in the Emirates for, for two months. So I don't know anyone in the city. I don't know anyone in this country. I don't even know anyone on this continent. I'm 13,000 kilometers away from everyone and everything that I know and love. And I'm sure a lot of people in this room can relate to that in some sort of fashion. So being a photographer, of course, I'm going to utilize a camera. Um, and because of budget, I couldn't afford, I couldn't afford a $5,000 medium format camera but I could afford a $200 plastic camera with an instant film back. And I knew, I knew from the very beginning there were some things that I knew were going to be constant throughout the entire project. I knew I wanted to shoot film because it seems like right now everyone is shooting digital. And for the project to be successful, I have, to, I have to utilize different tools, utilize different tools, a different process, and different material um, than what everyone else is doing for it to stand out. It's got to be different for it to be successful. It looks like everyone else's. It's just not going to work. It's going to be a waste of time. So I also knew at the very beginning that uh, I was going to photograph people. I like people. I'm a people person. I find people interesting. I just like shooting people. So I knew at the very beginning that I was going to photograph people. And I knew that there was going to be um, an element of some sort that was going to be consistent through it, throughout the entire series. And at the time when I was designing the project, I had absolutely no idea what that element was going to be. I just knew that whenever I saw it, that I would find it. That was, that was my thought process. So one day, I was shopping with my family at a teeny tiny 
Swedish furniture store on Yaz Island. And I stumbled upon this chair. And this chair, honestly, just kind of kind of spoke to me. Not like a creepy kind of sock puppet, like, hey, be my friend. It didn't, not, didn't talk to me like that. It was, it was more, honestly, it was just like, it was like love at first sight. And that I knew, I knew when I saw the chair, I knew that I had found my consistent element throughout the entire project. So at this point, I've got the, I've got the tool, I've got the camera, I've got the consistent element, I've got the chair. So now, all I need are participants. And I thought that that's, that's going to be the easy part. I'm a professional photographer. People pay me good money to photograph them. So I, at this time, it took me about three or four months to design the project. I had met people in passing. I've got um, a few colleagues, um, a few clients, and a few potential clients. I had a stack of business cards, about 50 people, that um, I emailed, asking them to, inviting them to, to view the project, take a look at the project, take a look at the blog. Uh, if you're interested in participating, I would love to photograph you. And I, I emailed each individual person. I didn't just send like one large broadcast email. I spent some time inviting every person. And so what happened was after I emailed everyone, I waited for a couple days, and they all said the exact same thing. They didn't say anything. They didn't say nothing at all. They didn't bother to respond to my email. So now I'm thinking to myself, I'm thinking, this is failure. I'm trying to photograph people for free, and it's for a great cause, and no one wants to participate. You can only imagine what that did to my teeny tiny fragile male ego. It was crushing. So I could do one of two things at this point. I could quit, and I'll have a shiny new red chair for my living room, or I can move forward and stay on task. And obviously, that's what I chose to do. And so I had parked the blog and had to come up with a, a creative way of reaching people, something that would tell the story or tell people exactly what I'm trying to, to do with this chair. And so what I did was I, I designed a, um, a video and I recruited the two people in my life that I knew wouldn't tell me no. And at the time, it was my three-year-old and my five-year-old son. So what I did was I wrote out, I scripted some, some words on, um, on a poster board, and I had my children hold them. My daddy is a photographer. He was working on a project called the Untitled Chair Project. It's helped raise awareness about becoming a bone marrow donor. Well, I don't know if you've ever worked with a three-year-old before. But they have the attention span that's measured in, in milliseconds. You really don't have a lot of time. And if you see the video, we actually were able to get the, the, um, the board upright to become a part of something bigger than yourself. And if you see my son in the background, he ran, and this is the, if you see the video, it's completely unscripted and, and unprompted other than these boards. Um, it gets a bit chaotic and a bit kind of humorous at the same time. Uh, my son in the background, he's, he's got his hands up like this. This is American Sign Language for I love you. My children and I, we say this to each other across the playground, across the living room, and sometimes we'll just stand in front of each other and silently say, I love you. So I got the video put together, got it uploaded on the blog. Uh, it, took about, it took about six weeks to get it all put together. And I went back to the original 50 people that I emailed, the ones that didn't respond. And by this time, I had an additional probably 30 contacts of people to, to email. So in total, I emailed another 80 people. And of those 80 emails that I sent out, two people responded. One was a, a thank you, but no thank you. Good luck with the project. And another response was from a woman by the name of Nadine Canso. I had met her while I was on a photo assignment. Nadine Canso is a very well-known and respected um, artist and jewelry designer. And she, she basically contacted me. She responded to the email and said, wow, this is great. I see what you're trying to do. I understand it. I want to be a part of this. And that's all that I needed. I just needed that one 
that one person just to believe in what I was trying to do for the project to move forward. And this is, this is the very first uh, Polaroid from, this, from the series. This is, this is Nadine Canso. Um, I'm going to share um, a few. Well, since Nadine, I have photographed a total of 36 people with the chair. Uh, and I know 36 really doesn't sound like a lot, but most professional photographers don't do 36 photo shoots in a year. So I'm going to share a few of the Polaroids from, from the series. This is Micah Simmons. Um, you could do. It's, um, re, you can do anything with the chair as a participant. You can stand on the chair, you can look at the chair, you can, do, you can be as creative and as crazy as you want to be with the chair. This is Micah Simmons. He is a very well-known uh, artist in the States. This is Nora. She is from uh, po uh, Poland. Um, Rami, he is from Syria. Paige is from um, Texas. She is a... Uh, she is a medical student. Uh, this is John Curry. Uh, he is a, uh, an amazing uh, singer-songwriter in the in, uh, United States. Uh, Sarita, she is from Sri Lanka. And she didn't pick that flower, by the way. She, she was just posing with it. This is Gabby. Gabby is a, um, is a special effects makeup artist. She can, she can do these really killer zombies. They're really kind of great. Like you can't eat and watch her work at the same time. They're pretty gross. They're amazing, actually. Kevin Peterson, he is a uh, very well-known uh, artist as well. Yasmin, she is a student in Lebanon. Chef Garav, uh, obviously he's a chef. Uh, at a, he's a chef at a five-star restaurant in Abu Dhabi. His food is so good. It'll make you not want to eat your mama's food anymore. So you don't try it or try it, whatever, whatever you want to do. But he's, got, he's a fantastic chef. This is uh, Evita. She's from Latvia. This is Juan. She's from Malaysia. It's an interesting story here. I wish I had time to get into it. Uh, Marta. She's from Barcelona. And it's interesting to see what people do with this chair. Like, I can't ask somebody here, OK, pick up the chair and do some circus tricks with it. Right? I can't do that. People just just do whatever they want to do. And this is, um, this is Ian. He is from England. He is a, uh, an English instructor in Saudi Arabia. And this, this is an actual Polaroid from the project. Is, this reminds me of what failure looks like. This is, I, I titled this lens cap. I forgot to remove the lens cap <laughs> from the camera. And so I kept it. It's part of the project. It reminds me of what failure looks like. You know, and if, we, if I would have shot this digital, the very first thing is delete. Exactly. So Captain, it's party reminds me what failure looks like. So after I photograph participants with the chair, what I ask them to do is to sign the chair. And signing the chair represents sharing the project with friends, family, and colleagues. And that's how the project grows. So what I did um, to by this point, I'm already photographing people within my circle of friends and my circle of colleagues. And I wanted to reach out past. How do I get past these people? Uh, and so what I decided to do was just to take the chair by itself uh, and photograph it without anyone. And I took 50 shots of the, of the chair by itself. I matted them and signed it. And I turned to social networking and I said, the first 50 people that become a fan of the project on Facebook and share the project with their friends and family, I will mail you one of these. This was probably a Friday night. Uh, yeah, it was Friday night. By Monday morning, I had 200 new fans on Facebook. And I had 70 people contact me, asking me for one of the Polaroids. Well, I had only shot 50. I didn't want to tell anyone no. I worked really hard on the project to get it to this point. That's the last thing I'm going to do is tell someone no. So I just went out and shot another 20 and mailed them out. And when I mailed them out, I asked, I asked them to, can you just do one thing for me? Can you just take, take a photo of it and post it to the project's Facebook page? And this is, um, I'm going to share a couple of the photos that were sent to me. This is in Germany. You can, obviously, you can see the, the Polaroid. I mean, that's cool. With cows, I couldn't ask me, hey, go take a picture of this with some cows. That's cool. This is uh, California. 
This is New York. You can see Brooklyn Bridge in the background. This is uh, in Germany. Um, this lady took her, her, uh, her Polaroid on, she shot a series. I think she spent like the entire day with her Polaroid. She, uh, this is Paderborn, Germany. And she, she sent me eight photos and they're really, really fantastic. I'm going to share two of them with you. There's this one and there's this one. So it's cool to see like this project, how, how it's grown in an international way. This is beautiful too. This is one of my favorites. This is Cork, Ireland. Russia, how cool is that? So now the project, I've got people from all over the world talking about the project and I've got people contacting me from all over the world expressing interest in, in being photographed with the chair. Well, I've worked really hard on the project to get it to this point. I don't want to tell anyone no. So I want to take the chair on tour around the world on a motorcycle with a sidecar. Sounds pretty crazy, doesn't it? And the way I want to fund it is through crowdfunding. For X amount of dollars, you can put your name or your best friend's name or your family's name on this motorcycle and you can come on tour with this and we will continue to raise awareness for the need of registered bone marrow donors and just go on an adventure as a, uh, another perspective, the crowd-sponsored bike. So that's where the project is, is at now. And this is, this is actually the first time that I've shared the uh, crowdfunding um, stage of the project. So what I, what I would ask you to do is to um, become, become informed um, about the simplicity of donating uh, and the simplicity of registering uh, to be a, a registered don bone marrow donor and do something amazing with your, with your life. Um, I was recently doing a, um, an interview with a, um, a magazine and the writer, she, she looked at me and she said, wow, you're proof that one person can, can make a difference. And my response to her was, imagine a world where everyone tried to make a difference. That's my time. Thank you, Manifold.